In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. Dear Heavenly Father, bless us as we go through Exodus 28, and especially as we study the high priesthood and the vestments of the high priest. Help us to see the significance of these vestments and how they all prepared the way for Jesus Christ, the true and eternal high priest. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So my brothers and sisters, now we're going to go to Exodus 28. And I want to talk with you about the vestments of the high priest. So let's go to 28 and let's read a little bit here. Then bring near to you Aaron. Who was Aaron, by the way? Aaron was Moses' brother. Okay. So bring near to you Aaron, your brother, and his sons with him from among the people of Israel to serve me as priest. Aaron and Aaron's sons, Nadab and Abihu, Eleazar, Ethamar, and you shall make holy garments for Aaron, your brother, for glory and for beauty. And you shall speak to all who have ability, whom I have endowed with an able mind, that they make Aaron's garments to consecrate him for my priesthood. What does the word consecrate mean? It means you're being set apart for a special holy task. You're consecrated. In this case, they're being set apart to serve God. And here's God commanding Moses, you're going to find people who have ability to make beautiful vestments for Aaron. And the vestments are described this way, for glory and for beauty in chapter 2. And so let's go on. One other thing I want to say is that Aaron and his sons are being chosen. Aaron will be the first high priest. His sons are going to be his successors, okay? So let's go on and, and look at how this happens here. So verse 3, And you shall speak to all who have ability, whom I have endowed, with an able mind, that they may make Aaron's garments to consecrate him for my priesthood. These are the garments which they shall make, a breastplate and an ephod, a robe, a coat of checkered work, a turban, and a girdle. They shall make holy garments for Aaron, your brother, and his sons to serve me as priest. Now let's talk a little bit about these garments. If you look at Adam, there's quite a few garments. Can you imagine putting all this stuff on? A lot there. A breastplate and an ephod. The ephod they believed that it was kind of like a white owl and that as time goes on, the ephod becomes one of the garments that identifies the priest, especially the high priest. But what's so interesting is that in 2nd chap in 2nd Samuel chapter 6, when David brought the ark of the covenant to Jerusalem, Guess what David put on? An ephod. And David began to act as a priest. It's one of the most incredible moments in Scripture because you have you stop and you say, wait a minute. In Exodus 28, God said that that was the garment for the high priest. And then in 2 Samuel, hundreds of years later, David is bringing the ark to Jerusalem. He's a king. He's from the tribe of Judah. And he puts on an ephod and begins to offer sacrifices and peace offerings to the Lord. He begins to act as a priest while the ark is being brought to Jerusalem. That's in 2 Samuel chapter 6, 14 to 20. Now, why do I bring this up? Because even though you have three distinct ministries, you have the priest, you have the prophet, and eventually you're going to have the king. You see David exercising all three of those ministries. Arguably, Solomon doing the same thing when Israel is a united nation. And then, of course, the nation splits north, south, Judah, Israel. 
And you don't really see that happening with the kings that follow. Of course, Jesus is priest, prophet, and king. All three will be combined in Christ. But I bring that up just because the ephod was a special sign of the priestly ministry. I just want to emphasize that. So let's go back to chapter 28. And if we go to verse 5, they shall receive gold, blue, and purple, and scarlet stuff, and fine twine linen, and they shall make the ephod of gold, of blue, purple, scarlet stuff, and fine twine linen, skillfully worked. Notice the emphasis on the ephod. It shall have two shoulder pieces attached to its two edges that it may be joined together and the skillfully woven band upon it to gird it on shall be on the same workmanship of material of gold, blue and purple and scarlet stuff and fine twine linen. And you shall take two onyx stones and engrave on them the names of the sons of Israel, six of their names on one stone and the names of the remaining six on the other stone in order of their birth in order of their birth who was the oldest reuben very good so going on as a jeweler engraves signets so shall you engrave the two stones with the names of the sons of israel and you shall enclose them in settings of gold filigree and you shall set the two stones upon the shoulder pieces of the ephod as stones of remembrance for the sons of Israel. And Aaron shall bear their names before the Lord upon his two shoulders for remembrance. And you shall make settings in gold filigree and two chains of pure gold twisted like cords. And you shall attach the cord chains to the settings. Now, what was the idea here? Aaron would go into the presence of God with these two stones on his shoulder. And on the stones, the names of the 12 tribes as a memorial or for remembrance. And so as Aaron would go in to offer sacrifice, he, he would have these two stones on his shoulders with the names of the sons of Israel right on his shoulders as sacrifices being offered. You know, and he's bearing them. It's like he's carrying Israel with him. And you know what it makes us think back to as Christians? Christ carrying the cross, bearing the weight of the cross for all the sons of Israel and all the Gentiles. And so Aaron coming in with the two stones, the names, bearing those on his shoulders as he bears sacrifice. And then centuries later, Christ bearing the cross for his people. So let us go down to verse 15. And you shall make a breast piece of, a breast piece of judgment. In skilled work, like the work of the ephod, you shall make it of gold, blue, and purple, and scarlet stuff, and fine twine linen, and you shall make it. It shall be square and double a span of its length and a span its breadth and you shall set it you shall set in it four rows of stones a row of sardis topaz carbuncle shall be the first row and the second row an emerald and sapphire and a diamond and the third row jacinth and agate and amaris and the fourth row beryl and onyx and jasper and they shall be set in gold filigree. Do you see it? How many stones were there? Twelve, Twelve stones. How many tribes were there? Twelve. Twelve tribes. Twelve names, six on each shoulder. Now, a breastplate with twelve stones on it. Four rows. Let's go on here. Okay. Did I miss, did I skip my chapter here? Okay, we're on verse 22. And you shall make for the breastpiece breast twisted chains like cords of pure gold, and you shall make for the breastpiece two rings of gold, and put the two rings on the two edges of the breastpiece, 
and you shall put the two cords of gold in the two rings at the edges of the breast piece. The two ends of the two cords you shall attach to the two settings of filigree and so attach it in front of the shoulder piece of the ephod. And you shall make two rings of gold and put them at the two ends of the breast piece on its edge next to the ephod. And you shall make two rings of gold and attach them in front of the lower part of the two shoulder pieces of the ephod at its joining above the skillfully woven band of the ephod. And you shall bind the breast piece by its rings to the rings of the ephod with a lace of blue that it may lie upon the skillfully woven band of the ephod, and that the breast piece shall not come loose from the ephod. Verse 29, this is important. So Aaron shall bear the names of the sons of Israel in the breast piece of judgment upon his heart when he goes into the holy place to bring them to continual remembrance before the Lord. And in the breastplate of judgment, you shall put the Urim and the Thummim, and they shall be upon Aaron's heart. When he goes in before the Lord, thus Aaron shall bear the judgment of the people of Israel upon his heart before the Lord continually. Now, I have to stop right here and say, Aaron is the high priest and the high priest we know in certain ways he personifies points to Christ he's a type of Christ and so here's Aaron as the high priest we know that our great eternal high priest is Jesus and so the ministry of the high priest it's preparing for anticipating it's a type of Christ and so what's amazing here, though, is that Aaron is going to bear the breastplate of judgment or the breast piece of judgment right upon his heart. On his shoulder, stones of remembrance. On his heart, the breast piece of judgment. Why is he doing this? What's the reason for all of this? Every time Aaron will go offer sacrifice, it's not that he's just going to go and do an act of abracadabra, here's a sacrifice, it's done, we're free, sin forgiven. That's not how it works. Literally, he's walking in and saying, Lord, I bear upon my shoulders the names of the, of the people of Israel who have sinned. I bear upon my heart the breastplate that, that recalls the 12 tribes of Israel. And I offer sacrifice for their sin. So, so personal would the action be of Aaron going in the presence of God and asking for forgiveness. And this is what Jesus does in the most personal way possible. He bears the cross and he goes and offers his life for our salvation on the cross. So you can see what Aaron's doing. You know, it's, it's an act where it's so personal, so meaningful, bearing the names of the Israelites on his shoulders, the stones which represent each tribe of Israel on the breast piece right in front of his heart, going to God and saying, Lord, this is all on our hearts. We ask you for forgiveness. And Christ would come in the fullness of time, and he would lay down his life for our salvation so you can see you can see the foundation of this when you go back to the exodus when you get through all the details that are in there and you stop for one second and say what does this mean what does it prepare for it prepares for christ to come into the world that is what it prepares for and so my brothers and sisters let's now go to verse i want to go to to verse 31 and you shall make the robe of the ephod of blue and it shall have in its opening for the head with a woven binding around the opening like the opening in a garment 
that it may not be torn. On its skirt you shall make pomegranates of blue and purple and scarlet stuff around its skirts with bells of gold between them. A golden bell and a pomegranate and a golden bell and a pomegranate round about the skirts of the robe. And it shall be upon Aaron when he ministers. Its sound shall be heard when he goes into the holy place before the Lord. And when he comes out, lest he die. Wow. Well, look at this. Going into the Holy of Holies was not a daily task. It only happened once a year. And imagine this. Aaron would wear this robe that had bells on it ringing, ringing when he went into the holy place and then when he went into the Holy of Holies so that you would know that he was present ministering to God. Verse 36, And you shall make a plate of pure gold and engrave on it like the engraving of a signet. And what will they put on it? Holy to the Lord. And you shall fasten it on the turban by a lace of blue, and it shall be on the front of the turban, and it shall be upon Aaron's forehead. And Aaron shall take upon himself any guilt incurred in the holy offering, which the people of Israel hallow as their holy gifts. It shall be, it shall always be upon his forehead, that they may be accepted before the Lord. So right on the front of this turban would be a plate, and it would be put right here. And on the front of the gold plate, it would say, Holy to the Lord, Kadosh Lalonai, something like that. Holy to the Lord. And imagine this, holy to the Lord, reminding the people of the priest who is consecrated to God to offer sacrifice for the people of Israel. And, and you know, it, it tells you something about the priesthood. It tells you something about the ministry and duty of the priest. It also tells you how we should live our lives. Each one of us holy to the Lord. Verse 39. And you shall weave the coat and checkered work of fine linen, and you shall make a turban of fine linen, and you shall make a girdle embroidered with needlework. And for Aaron's sons, you shall make coats and girdles and caps, and you shall make them for glory and beauty. And you shall put them upon Aaron's brother, uh, Aaron your brother, and upon his sons with him. And you shall anoint them and ordain them and consecrate them that they may serve me as priest. And you shall make for them linen breeches to cover their naked flesh from the, from the loins to, to the thighs they shall reach, and they shall be upon Aaron and upon his sons. And they, when they go into the tent of meeting, or when they come near the altar to minister in the holy place, lest they bring guilt upon themselves and die. This shall be a perpetual statute for him and for his descendants after him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we see how the priest was consecrated completely to God. And not only that, but that even in his vestments, the vestments point to the personal nature of his ministry, that he would bear the names of Israel upon his shoulders, and that he would bear stones right over his heart as he offered sacrifice to God, so that the priest would understand how important his duty was to offer sacrifice for the forgiveness of sins. Help us to see how Jesus fulfilled all of this, that all was laid upon his heart, and he came into this world and offered the most perfect sacrifice for our sins so that we could be free. And help us also to understand that in Christ, we are called to be holy to the Lord. We are called to consecrate every single part of our life to the Lord and to offer it in service to our God. 
We ask you to continue to bless your people. We ask this through Christ our Lord, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.